שלום, ברק תהיה בהשם יהב שי, בהשם רקר קדש. All praises and glories definitely do, especially in the times we're living in. Much respect to the apostles and others of Great Millstone and to all the brothers out there doing the work, I say Shalom. All right, this lesson is going to be, uh, I pray for them. And we're going to obviously in this lesson discuss who are the them, which is very simple. All right. I pray for them and not the world. So the world, Lord is not concerned with. Okay. And we'll show you that. That he's not concerned with that. And we're going to do that right away. As well as with who he's talking about the them. All right. So we're going to start here quickly in uh, Matthews uh, 15 and 24. All right. Again, my title is I Pray for Them and Not the World. All right? So, uh, I am sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I believe that's clear enough, people. Okay? He's not sent unto the world, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which is made up of the 12 tribes. All right, the house of David, okay, Jacob, do you understand that? The 12 tribes, from the tribe of Judah all the way down to the tribe of Issachar, made up of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, all right? And this doesn't come from man, and this doesn't come from this realm or this world here. This comes from the heavens. And you read it in James 3, 17. Where does this wisdom come from? These scriptures, okay, from the heavens. It comes from above you. That's what you will read there. This wisdom comes from above you, which is what? The heavens. Okay? Do you understand, people? All right? And the word is pure. Before Esau gets to perverse and corrupt, your minds. All right? You understand? All right. So I am sent. I am not sent, but unto the Lord's sheep of the house of Israel. So his concern is not with the world. His concern is with his people, the 12 tribes. Got that? All right? Now, you can also say that during this time when he walked the earth and the ones that were there were the southern tribes made up of Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Because, you know, and, you know, you could say, you know, some of the northern kingdom because, uh, you know, there were already dispersions. All right, that had taken place because you had a split within the kingdom. All right, you know, we we split up northern and southern kingdom. We became, you know, after the split, you know, between Jeroboam and Rehoboam. Okay, so there's still the other half. Well, he has an answer for you for that. Let's go to St. John's 10 and 16. All right. St. John's 10 and 16. And the other sheep I have, which are not of this fold, so in other words, they're not of the southern kingdom, all right? Talking about the northern kingdom, the 10 Indian tribes, all right? Okay, them also must I bring, they shall hear my voice, and there shall be one fold, in other words, one kingdom, yeah, and we read about that, right, all over the scriptures, and particularly, right, of uh, the kingdoms coming back together again, being one fold, 
you know, one stick in the Lord's hand. We read that in Ezekiel chapter 37, the Valley of Dry Bones, where it's talking about that, right? Okay? And there shall be one fool and one shepherd. You understand that? Okay, that one shepherd would be King David, and that uh, king would be Yahushai. All right, the Mashiach. You understand that? People, because that's the order of things, how it's going to be in the kingdom. Of course, you have the Heavenly Father, Yahweh. You have Yahweh Shai. You'll have King David. You'll have the 12 apostles. And then you're going to have the 144,000, which are all men, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes who are going to be the governing bodies to the kingdom. And they all will have crowns upon their heads. And they all, everyone's going to be immortal. And that's talking about the nation of Israel. When I'm saying everyone, everyone of the nation of Israel will be immortals. But it all starts with the elect. All right, who the Lord is coming back for. So again, my title is, I pray for them and not the world. Okay? Now, to prove this to you that the Lord is not dealing with the world. I mean, you people, I'm not going to take you over there. Go to Psalms 147, 19 and 20. Read it for yourselves. All right? The Lord is not dealing with any other nation. Okay? So he's not dealing with the world. He's only dealing, as it will tell you there, with Jacob, with Israel, with the 12 tribes, his people. All right? And you understand all throughout the scriptures you read, you know, that, you know, you are the temple of God. Okay, you Israelites, this is your book. Okay, he's talking to you. Do you understand that? He's talking to you. All right? And that's backed up by Amos 3, 1 and 2. All right? All right, so let's go to... Uh, let's go to... Uh, St. John's, we'll stay here, St. John's 14, 17, all right? What does it say here? Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive. So you see that? The world cannot receive it. What's my title? I pray for them and not the world. He's not concerned with the world. You understand that? He's not concerned with them, all right? Because it seeth him not, and it neither knoweth him. Why? Because they don't know these scriptures. Okay? And remember that he comes in the volume of the book. Hebrews, uh, what is that? Hebrews 10 and 7, I believe. All right? Let me finish this, and uh, we'll run over there. All right. Because it seeth him not, and neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. See that? All right, let's see here. Let's see, Hebrews. All right. 10 and 7. All right. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O oh God power. See that? You understand people? And they don't know this book. They don't they don't understand these scriptures because again these scriptures are coded. Alright? Allegories, parables, dark sayings, the prophecies. And these people don't get into it. And these people go to what, theological seminary school? Like Elder Apostle Tahar likes to call it cemetery school. Right? And he's on he's on point when he says that because these people don't know anything about these scriptures. And the reason for that is because the Lord's not dealing with them. Obviously, they're not Israel. You understand that? They're not Israelites. They're not of the seed. Okay? And they certainly were not called in. All right? In other words, they're not they were not called into this. They weren't invited in, all right? And you don't walk in unawares. It doesn't work that way, all right? 
and the uh, the Lord has to be supping with you, as we read in Revelation 3 and 20, all right? So anyway, I'm giving you some background, all right? So uh, I pray for them. We're going to prove that the them, we know it's talking about Israel as a whole, but in particular who? The elect of Israel. And uh, again, these are, these are men that, uh, and women, you know, of Israel that, and particularly the men, that no one's going to pluck them out of the Father's hand here. All right, so uh, let's go to St. John's, okay? Let's go to St. John's uh, 17. Uh, I think we'll start around verse 6, all right? All right, and we'll read down to around verse 19. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. You see that? And so, again, like I said, in particular, I pray for them. In particular, who? The elect of Israelites. All right? And understand that these men were chosen before the foundation of the world, before the world began. Okay? You understand that? This is all in the scriptures, people. Okay? All you have to do is get into the word elect, election. You understand? And it tells you that. All right? Give me a minute. Go to another tab and show you that quickly. All right, this is 2 Peter 1.10. Wherefore, rather, brethren, give diligence, right? Diligence meaning be continuous, a workman, all right? Never taking your hand off the plow. To make your calling, when you get into the word calling, it gets into the word invite, invitation. Again, you can't walk in unawares. And we're going to deal here with the word election. To make your calling and election sure, if you do these things, you shall never fall. Okay, now, the only uh, scripture that oversees this is Ephesians 2 and 8. It is grace by faith that ye are saved, and not of yourselves. It is a gift, all right, from Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh You understand, people? All right. Anyway, let's get into this word election here. All right. Give me a minute. All right. The word here is that All right. Right here. The act of God's free will by which before the foundation of the world, see, before the world began, he decreed, you see that? He decreed his blessings to certain persons. Among who? Among Israel. Known as the elect. Do you understand that? Okay? And particularly men. Men are the leaders of his flock. Do you understand that? He decreed made from choice by which he determined to bless certain persons through Yahweh Shai, right, his son, by grace alone. A thing or a person chosen, persons of God's elect. You see that? Now we'll prove to you that it's just Israel. All right, choosing one out of many, many a call, few are chosen, you see. Of the God power, choosing whom he judged fit to receive favors, right? And separated, which means they were sanctified, made holy and separate from the rest of mankind. You see that? You understand it, people? To be particularly of his own and to be attended continually by his gracious oversight. You see that? By his mercies. All right? I.e. who? Does it say the world there? Does it say multinations? Does it say Edomites, the white man? Does it say Moabites, the Chinese, Ishmaelites, the Arabs, Anamites, the Japanese? No. 
Israelites made up of you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans that are the descendants of Jacob. All right? See, of the God Father uh, choosing the God power, the Heavenly Father choosing Christians as whom he set apart. All right? So you have to be an Israelite to be a Christian. There you go, people. I'll be right back with part two.